welcome to Vision Heart blog number seven. We've been going on for the last few episodes on the ego. Just a little recap, we've been looking at it recently in um, using the analogy of a hard encased shell in the case of the unhealthy ego where nothing comes in, nothing goes out, and the healthy ego where it acts more dynamically and interacts more dynamically with its environment and so on. Um, in a healthy way where there's a healthy intake of what is beneficial to it and in exchange for waste and so on which is taken out of the cell. Uh, a healthy ego allows things in and removes those things which are no longer beneficial or do not function or actually cause problems for the cell. I thought it would be interesting to go a little bit deeper into looking at the ego itself and how it functions, what it is and how it functions. Each of us is very clear about who we are and we think I am this I am so-and-so I am Richard Warner you are so-and-so and when we begin the process of something like meditation and you start to look at the mind and you start to sit down and do something like Vipassana meditation which is all about sitting down clearly watching the breath getting the body to calm down and so on and then you watch each thought as it passes by. Vipassana teacher Stephen Levine had a great analogy for that in terms of coming to a uh, train stop, uh, a stop where a, a train is going by and you, the bars come down and the bells are going and you're sitting there and for a while you're watching each of the trains segments go by and when you buy into each segment as it goes by, you are identifying with or buying into, you're paying attention to each one as it goes by. You could say that that would be something that someone would experience on a daily basis and a much more rapid basis. When you sit down to meditate, you're aware of each thought as it comes by. It moves through and comes by. That in itself, that process is natural. That's what the mind does, the mind thinks that's what its function is and that's the ego's function is to put a sense of identity with that thought that goes by and this is the trap. If we identify with every thought that goes by we feel responsible for each thought, we feel guilty for each thought, we take pleasure in each thought and we derive identity from each of those thoughts. The interesting thing though is if you've done Vipassana meditation, if you've sat down and watched those thoughts go by, the more aware you become, the more aware you start to realize that each one of those thoughts has a separate kind of I to it. There's, especially when memories come up, there's either future fears or past resentments. This is often the content of what comes up. You get up in the morning and you had a fight with a coworker the previous day and you're not looking forward to seeing that coworker as you go into work this day and you start to recap that, uh, that conflict that you had with that person and so on. And then there's that I, there's the you that was in that situation and how you felt specifically towards that person and you are very angry and whenever that person's, the thought of that person comes up, all of those feelings and associations that you put in with that situation become, that becomes your I, that's you. And then you see your loved one or something else that's, that has a very different association for you and there's a very different I, there's a very different self that, that is associated, there's a different feeling in the body, there's a different feeling in the mind, there are different sets of associations and so on. And you start to realize after a while as each one of these trains goes through that you're taking on each one of those things and identifying with it. So then the question becomes which one of those eyes am I? The eye that is angry at the coworker and doesn't want to deal with that situation is a very angry eye. It has a very, very set way of thinking, set kind of reactions and so on. And then there's the I that's dealing with the loved one or the pet or where there's a positive association. Which one of those are you? Which one of those are we? Are we the angry person? Are we the resentful, angry, hateful person that's thinking mean thoughts? 
or are we the loving, caring person? A lot of people say, well, I'm really the loving, caring person, and then so-and-so makes me angry, so that's another part of myself. Yes, but underneath it all, there is a singular sense of identification, and the, the qualities of each one of those eyes is very, very different. And after a while, you start to see through the process of meditation, that there are several eyes that come up. There's the lustful eye, there's the spiritual eye, there's so many different eyes that come up. And Levine's analogy of the train cars going by, and each time one goes through, we connect to that train car and we identify with it. So we're whipping our heads, our psychic heads, so to speak, with each thought that goes through and making ourselves crazy and so on. And there's, you see, you actually start to experience that there are several eyes within five minutes. Many different eyes, very contrasting eyes show up. So the question then becomes, who am I? Which one am I? This was called Atma Vichara by a, a Hindu saint called Ramana Maharshi. And his whole method was to watch those different eyes surfacing and to keep questioning each one as they show up. But who is that I? Who is that I? Levine offers an, an interesting solution to that with his metaphor of the trains. After a while when you're sitting at a train stop and you're waiting for the cars to go whizzing by and it's a long train and so on, eventually what starts to happen is you start to look through the train at the landscape on the other side, the trees or the other part of the road that's going off into the distance and so on. And then you're not really paying attention to the cars that are whipping through anymore as you're looking through and seeing the still, quiet landscape that's on the other side. And this is the beginning of peace, Levine suggests, where we're not being dragged into each car as it's going by because each one of those cars is very different, it's very distinct, and so on. So, which one of those cars are you? Which one of the cars are we? Which one of those do we identify with? All of them, but they're very different. The I, actually, the ego I, the daily self, the self that's each one of those eyes in each one of those situations, is an illusion that's deriving its its sense of individuality, its sense of separateness from a deeper sense of I. There's something underneath that Maharshi suggests or other, other traditions suggest. There's another sense of I. This is what in some, case, uh, some cases or some traditions is called the larger self. This is the self that, that sees all of these things as being parts or parcels that run through, but as illusions. A good example, a good metaphor for this was given in the, in the um, metaphor of the movie projector. The movie projector, the source of, of, of light, the eye, shall we say, is unqualified. It's a white light, it's brilliant, and it shines through, and the different, the changes in the different colors of the gel of the film that's going in front of the light changes the picture. And what's projected out is the world of the everyday. The world that we see, the world that we experience through the filter of our own conditions, our own conditioning, our own preferences, our own predilections, our own history, all of the biography, the story that makes us up, is the film gel through which the pure light of consciousness is shining through and projecting out into the specific, uh, specifics of our existence. And the trick then is to pull our awareness back to the point where we are just seeing the pure light of consciousness or the blue sky beyond the clouds that are going by. This is a, a metaphor that's used in the Tibetan Dzogchen tradition 
where the clouds do not affect the sky. They cover it up and they appear to block out the blue sky, but actually they don't even touch the sky. They're not even, they appear to be part of the sky, but they don't touch the sky. The pure consciousness of I is that blue sky or that space between the trains. This is a major step, a major shift of consciousness that one begins to experience once one begins to meditate. If one can achieve even that, changes in the daily life will be extremely different. Um, will, changes will be experienced and the daily life will be experienced in a very different way. Whereas if uh, sometimes thoughts come up that are, I know I've had thoughts, um, everybody must have, have had them, where you're actually surprised that you thought those things. Something maybe something violent, particularly thinking about the coworker that you're not so happy with. And we take a responsibility for them. Once I learned to stop taking responsibility for every thought that went through my head, my mind was much more at peace. Once I accepted the idea that the mind just thinks that's its nature, that's what it does, it thinks, and you take less responsibility and less identification with each one of those thoughts, if you just see it, that's just a thought, that's just an idea, it's just the mind doing its thing, and you keep your eye on the space between each of those thoughts, on the blue sky between the clouds, there's a sense of peace, there's a sense of something larger, a sense of self that is much, much larger, much more peaceful than the everyday mind that is constantly grabbing at each little thing that comes through it. Try it. Even if you can do it for two minutes, two minutes of successful awareness of watching the mind do its 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 burbling, its babbling, uh, and its identifying with each each car that goes by, and it will. And if you've never done this before, this is what you'll experience. And it's not something to get frustrated with. It's not something to get angry with. It's something to recognize. The more you recognize, if you can recognize that for two minutes you were completely distracted and dragged into each train as it went by you've increased your awareness and that is a huge success. Once we start this process and gradually over time deepen it, deepen it, deepen it, each space between the car takes maybe a little bit longer, the blue sky space between the clouds starts to increase, there's a sense of peace that develops, a sense of awareness that's able to handle each of these things as they come through and not identify with them. And if we're not identifying with them, they're not causing us the same amount of pain uh, and suffering, dragging us along and causing disquiet. Once we achieve that state, we've gone a long, long way to being able to open up to other ideas, to be able to experience life less through a filter of thousands of thoughts going through, thousands of distractions, thousands of different colors appearing across the film, and there's more white light that comes through. Try it out. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you next time.